Hey guys, uh, Mr. Wood back for some more AP Chemistry and do chapter seven here. So kind of just work a little bit at a time. So, but uh, what do you guys need uh, and I need are jokes. So here we go. Uh, okay, I I've got three jokes for you today. What has 12 legs, six eyes, three tails, and can't see. I'll say it again. What has 12 legs, six eyes, three tails, and can't see? Three blind mice. There you go. What is small, furry, and smells like bacon? A hamster. And what should a mouse, or when should a mouse carry an umbrella when it's raining cats and dogs? Okay, so... That's the highlight of this lesson. Okay, so we're back to um, doing more in Chapter 7. And remember, we started talking about, and really our lessons, and it's going to continue today, is really almost more of a physics lesson. But we're going to start, learn about waves because waves are going to help us understand more about electron structure and electron arrangement and the app. Okay, so <clears throat> back where we were then. We had one equation, which is on our formula sheet. Okay, and this one, this one we've already done. So this is an equation, it's on our formula sheet. We did this problem in the last lesson, definitely need to be able to do a problem like that. Okay, so then the, uh, the, the <clears throat> what we're gonna be learning about again, and, and I might just barely touch on this, but it's called the quantum mechanical model. And this, this slide is about the idea of a quantum. This goes back over 100 years ago. So this uh, chemist named Max Planck found that heated objects didn't emit any energy of, quanti of, of any quantity, but rather gave off whole number amounts. And that's what the idea of a quantum is. Planck coined the term quantum, the smallest whole number amount of light energy that can be emitted or absorbed. And so some examples of a quantum, a definite amount, like pops in a pop machine. Well, there's a, oh, of course, there's only one can of pop in a pop machine. You don't get a half a, a can of pop. Tires at the tire store. Again, they get one tire. You don't get a half a tire or a third of a tire, just a one whole tire. Babies at the hospital. You get one baby at the hospital. Gasoline at the gas pump, and that, if kind of you think about that, then the next quantity wouldn't be a gallon; it would be a single, not even a drop. It would be a molecule, but that would be the whole number uh, that would be uh, increasing there. And for light, it would be a wave, and that's what uh, Max Planck noticed. And that's again where they get this term: the quantum mechanical model is a definite amount, a whole number amount is his contribution to the model. Okay, so here is the next equation. The one on the top you do not need to know, but the next one you do. So the energy of multiple waves can be calculated again. So the E equals NH frequency or nu, not, you won't need to know that one, but the one underneath it you will. And that's, that is also on our formula sheet. Again, you can't see this very well, but on the front, it is right. It's actually the very first one right there. And so this is one that would expect to be able to use. So light is quantized. It comes in whole numbers of basic units. And I kind of think, to me, the, the quantized amount is the H. If you look at this, E is energy in joules. And I'll show you here how the units work out. H is a constant, which again is on our formula sheet, and when I go back to big screen, I'll point this out, but there's Planck's constant right there, and it is joules times seconds, and then frequency is hertz, which is really just one over seconds. Okay, so here's a problem with this. Determine the photon, the energy of a photon of one wave of x-ray, and x-ray has got... Um, you're given the wavelength in nanometers compared to the photon of infrared radiation, again, given in nanometers. Okay, so if I go back here, 
So again, what I'm saying then is on our formula sheet, right here is the equation. Uh, e is equal to H times frequency, or nu, if you want to be technical, the, the uh, Greek letter that's used to represent frequency is nu. And then the value for H is uh, right here. Planck's constant H is right there. Okay, so if I do this, this problem that I've given us here, so we're trying to solve for energy. So energy is equal to H times the frequency. And if we go back to what we learned before, we said, and actually what I'm going to use first is the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So I'm ultimately trying to find energy here. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to find, and first of all, I'm going to do this. So I can say that the frequency is equal to the speed of light over the wavelength. And I know the value for the speed of light. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in here. So what I get is then energy is equal to HC over the wavelength. But the units, the units for H, well, the units for H is, so this is going to be 6.626. Joules times seconds, but for the speed of light, it's 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, and what I'm told, what this problem told me is that the for an X-ray, for an X-ray, they say that the energy or the uh, the wavelength is 5.00 times 10 to the negative. This is for the X-ray. So it's 5.00 times 10 to the negative 2 nanometers. And see, I need this because, because this is in meters. Because this is in meters, I need this to be in meters. So what it is, it's 1 times 10 to the 9 nanometers for 1 meter. So I'm getting what I'm doing is I'm getting the wavelength to be in meters here. Okay, so if I do this... Do the math here. So I got 5.00 second exponent negative 2 divided by 1 second exponent to the ninth. Gives me 5 times 10 to the negative 11. And that is meters. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to put that here. And again, just like I am trying to, to model to you guys, or 10 to the negative 11 is the units. So if I look here, meters go. Seconds go, and I'm left in joules, which is what I want. I didn't write this out right. The 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. Okay, so now, now I do the math. So I have 6.626 second exponent negative 34 times 3.00 second exponent to the 8th, enter divided by 5.00 second exponent negative 11. And what that gives me is 3.98 times 10 to the negative 15. And the unit is joules. So this is the energy for an x-ray. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's move the screen over here. Over here on this side of the board. Okay, so again, I'm going to use the same equation. So I want to solve for energy, so it's equal to H times frequency, which again is really equal to H over the wavelength. And the value for H is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. The speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the negative 8 meters per second. What I need to do is get the wavelength in the in the right unit, and, and for the infrared, for infrared, we are told that it is uh, the wavelength is five point zero zero times ten to the fourth nanometers. So again, I want to get I want to get this into meters, so my units agree. So. 1 times 10 to the 9th 
nanometers for every one meter. So that gives me 5.00 times 10 to the negative fifth meters. So I'm just getting my units right. So this is going to be the wavelength. This is going to go here. Just getting the units right. And again, so there goes meters, there goes seconds, and I'm left with joules. So 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times 3.00 times 10 to the eighth, enter, divided by 5.00 second exponent times 10 to the negative fifth. That gives me 3.97 times 10 to the negative 21st joules. So this is for infrared. Okay, and if I go back here and I look at what I had for an X-ray, so for an X-ray, the energy was 3.97 times 10 to the negative 15th joules. <clears throat> so if I compare the two, determine the energy of both, <clears throat> and actually if I wanted to compare them, even go further, because these exponents are negative, this is the larger number. So if I took the x-ray, 3.97 times 10 to the negative 15th, over the infrared, just how much more energetic is a photon of x-ray, of an x-ray. This is why when you go to the dentist, the technician, he or she, they put a vest on you. And it is, do that right, 3.97 second exponent of negative 15 divided by 3.97 second It is, let me get my zeros. I think it's a million times, maybe it's 10 million. One, two, three. It's a million times. So it's a million times. So an X ray is a million times more energetic than infrared radiation. Okay, again, uh, hopefully not too difficult a problem. Okay, let me do one more problem and I'll uh, put it in. It'll be enough just kind of going a little bit at a time here as we go into chapter um, chapter seven. Okay, so this this problem we just did. Okay, here's another problem. Now this one kind of gets into. Um, This one gets into some stoichiometry. So determine the minimum wavelength of light <clears throat> needed to photo dissociate a molecule of water. So we're trying to find wavelength here. But we got energy from the equation, from the balanced equation. Okay, so, and again, one thing you guys can notice, and this is something you guys can be working on. And again, the one thing over Thanksgiving, I'm hoping you just give me an hour or two in Chapter 7, but problems 16, 38 through 41, you can be trying those problems. Okay, so let's do this problem. Okay, this will be the last one, and this one's a good one. Okay, we, are definitely, we are definitely doing AP chemistry problems now. We're definitely doing some really good problems here. Okay, so what I've got... is I have this balanced equation. If you look at this, this is what this is saying is if we take liquid water plus light, so like ocean water, water we drink, and it makes, it, it, de, it dissociates it to H2 plus O2, and the delta H value is 285.8. Okay, and what we're trying to find, it says determine the minimum wavelength of this light. We want to find the wavelength. Well, remember, using the equation that we had in the last problem, we had energy was equal to HC over the wavelength. Well, if I rearrange that, 
wavelength is equal to HC over the energy. And I, and I know I know the H and I know the C. So I'm talking here, you can't see what I'm writing on the board. So I know the value for H. So it's 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. I know the speed of light. Those are right on our formula sheet. Key here is I've got to solve, I've got to figure out energy, okay? Well, this is saying, and that's where I'm going to use this balanced equation. So it says to photo dissociate one molecule. So to figure out the energy, that's the key. I'm going to start with one molecule of water. And I'm going to use a lot like what we did in Chapter 6, which is a test that you guys are going to take this week. And I'm just going to use the balanced equation. So I know that for every 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, as I said, one molecule, there's one mole. So it's an Avogadro's number. And then I'm going to use the balanced equation. So for every one mole of water, there's 285.8 um, kilojoules, or 285.8 yeah, kilojoules. Okay, so if I do that, that is going to tell me the energy. So I'm going to do the math here. So I've got 285.8. And where I got this from is from this right here for every one molecule of water. Divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd gives me this number. <clears throat> and this, this would be in kilojoules. So this is 4.75 times 10 to the negative 22 kilojoules. But if I watch the units here, this is in joules. So I want to get this, this into joules. So I'm going to take 4.75 times 10 to the negative 22 kilojoules. And for every one kilojoule, there's a thousand joules. So I'm just getting this into joules. So I have 4.75 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Okay, now I've got this. So now I'm going to take this. I'm going to plug it in for energy. So it's going to go right here. <clears throat> and again, now I'm going, to, I'm going to go back and I'm going to check my units. So joules go, seconds go, and I'm going to left it. In meters. And again, that's what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find wavelengths. We got 6.626 second exponent negative 34 times 3.00 second exponent to the eighth. Enter divided by 4.75 second exponent to the negative 19th. And that gives me the wavelength of. <clears throat> 4.18 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. So it is 4.18 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Okay, and then if I really want to figure out what kind of light it is, I'm going to go back here in a second. I'm going to go back to the screen. But um, if I get this into nanometers, so if I take this and I go back to nanometers. I've answered the question. There's the answer. But if I want to figure out, okay, what, co what color of light this is, if I take that 4.18 times 10 to the negative 7 meters, and I go to nanometers, so for every 1 meter, there's 1 times 10 to the ninth nanometers. So that, gives me 418 nanometers. And I'll show you if I gave you if I gave you a table. So, so in nanometers, that's the answer. But up here, if you answered it this way, that certainly would be acceptable. This is the kind of problem you're going to have on that test. But if we go back then to if I gave you a table like I did earlier in the chapter. Let's 
So if I go back, can I go way back here, this table, and if you look at the very bottom, uh, where it's wavelength, and it says this is in nanometers. So 418 is like a violet. So this, so this would be like a violet color. And of course, it's a good question to ask yourself. That then, so what this is saying is violet water. If we, again, if we go back and, and ask ourselves, okay, well, what did this problem tell us? Well, is this saying then that violet light from the sun is causing water to photo dissociate, break that apart. And obviously that's not happening. Uh, so there must be something else that's holding things together, but that's what that problem told us. That is the correct way to do it. That's a good problem, a hard problem. Okay, guys, uh, again, if you just over Thanksgiving, give me an hour or two, hopefully, and we'll come back and review and get all fresh on this. So have a good rest of your day. Bye.